In this section, we're going to be looking at another form of a quadratic equation. So before, we've been looking when our quadratics are written in standard form, which is where I start with the largest exponent and work my way down. Now I'm going to be looking at vertex form. So I want you to remember and recall that the vertex is the, the turning point. It's either the highest or the lowest point in our quadratic. So when we're looking at the vertex form, here's the vertex form, and there's a couple pieces you have to be absolutely aware of. So it's going to be y equals, and then we've got a x minus h squared plus k. Big thing I want you to notice is that, yes, this is a minus in here. Oh, come on, highlighter. That that's a subtraction. We are not adding there. So you always want to get yourself to be we're subtracting in there. Okay, and I'll show you in just a few minutes what these different values do and how we can find them. So when I'm looking at vertex form, we would assume that finding the vertex would be pretty easy, which it is. So I've got h comma k is my vertex point. So I just take these two points, these two pieces, h and k, and that's my vertex. Well, it is also kind of nice that x equals h is going to be our axis of symmetry. So when I had standard form, I had to go through and do some math to get there, but now I don't because I'm written in vertex form. Okay? So here we're going to be looking at the axis and um, axis of symmetry and the vertex for each equation. So let's look at this first one, and I'm not going to do all of these with you. I'm going to let you do a couple of them too. But this one's a good one to start with. So I know I have to have x minus h. So if I was to rewrite this as x minus h, that h value would be a negative 4. So I know then my axis of symmetry would be x equals negative 4. Even though it's a plus in here, because I have to, in my vertex form, have that minus sign in there, it needs to be a negative 4. So then, oops, and this is a 2. So then my vertex would be negative 4, comma, negative 2. I just take my h value and my k value from my original equation, and that's my vertex. Okay. So similar thing here. So I have x minus h, which is cool because then my h value is just that. So my axis of symmetry would be x equals 3. My vertex is that value and then my k value. And since I don't have one here, it's just going to be a 0. Ooh, not a 6, a 0. Okay. So now let's look at how we can graph when we have this form. Okay. So I'm going to do it pretty similarly than what we did as what we did um, in our last section, except here we already know the axis of symmetry and the vertex. But from there, we're still going to use that as our middle point and then pick some x values on each side. So my axis of symmetry here, well, x minus, so it's going to be x equals a negative 2, because the sign inside has to switch. My vertex would be a negative 2, positive 7. Okay, so then from there, I can pick some values that are smaller, and we're going to go ahead and pick negative 3 and negative 4, just because we can, and we'll pick negative 1 and 0. Um, and so those are the values that are bigger. So now that I have those values, now I go ahead and put them in my calculator and come up with my y value. So if I just put negative 4 into this equation, I would end up with 3. And when I put negative 3, I get 6. And so same here. Okay. So now let's go ahead and graph those points. So I know I have a negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 3, 6, and 0, 3. And there we go. So you can see I have those five points now that I can just connect and draw my line through, my quadratic through. Okay. So again, the domain for any quadratic, it doesn't matter, is going to be all real numbers. So here's one of those examples where our range is not going to be greater than because it's going down. So y is less than or equal to the highest place that this quadratic ever reaches is, the ver is its vertex point. So y is less than or equal to 7. And I could know that also because this graph I know will open down because that a value is negative. Okay, we looked at that in the very first section. Is if our a is negative, it's going to open down. Same thing here. Okay, so now let's look at this next example, and we'll see what we can come up with that. Actually, I want you to do that one. I want you to try that one and see where you can get. Um, and I'll post the answers for you too. So now we're going to look at transformations, right? And so a transformation is just we're moving it or we're changing it. So the most simplistic quadratic equation, this is what we call our parent function. The parent function is going to be y 
equals x squared, right? And this is the parent function, as I was saying. So you can see in this parent function, I've done nothing to it. I'm not adding anything. I'm not subtracting anything. I'm not multiplying. I'm not dividing. I'm not doing anything to it. I just have my x squared. So a transformation, we're going to take this x squared and we're going to start to do stuff to it. Okay, so a transformation is a change. We're changing to the size or position. So we're either changing how it looks or we're changing where it's at. Okay, so in these next examples, I was given the parent function. Okay, so the parent function is the one that's already been graphed for us. So now let's go ahead and graph this one. So when we're graphing this, we want to find that... Um, vertex first. So in that vertex, remember, it's going to be this h value, which is negative 2, and my k value, which is 0. Okay, And so then I can pick some other values to plug in. So when I plug these in, those are what I get. Okay, So now I can actually graph those points. So if I go over to negative 4, and then there, and then there. So from my parent function, so from the black graph, what did I do to get to the purple one? Well, I see that I shifted it left too. That's the transformation that I did with that graph and with that function. Okay, so now I want you to look at some of these, and some of them get a little more tough. So let's look at this one. Let's look at number nine together, um, just because mo I see multiple things happening here. So let's look at number nine together. And just like we did, we start with our vertex, which is going to be this h value of negative one, negative six. Well, so from there, I can just pick whatever x values I want. So negative two, negative three, zero, and one. When I plug these values, these x values, into my equation, I'm going to end up with negative two, negative five, negative 5, negative 2, okay? So then I have then I have enough information to graph. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, okay, so there is my purple graph, okay? So the things I notice, and I'm going to actually put them in, whoops, in color here, so that you can kind of see where they come from. And it's not super important that you see that now, but it will make your life easier down the road. So I noticed that I went left one, right? And I see that, oh, I have this in here. And I went, let me get a different color than that. I went down, come on, this is supposed to be red. So I went down six, oh, I see that that piece is right there too. So those transformations, don't just show up when we graph them, they also show up when I'm writing the equation. So we can see it in two different places. Okay, so now if you keep growing, you'll see that there's some more exercises and some more examples I want you to try and double check that you're doing it right. So then we're going to put it all together, like get all of our stuff in the same spot. Okay, so figuring out what those letters do. This is what you just found by working through those examples. So h, remember that h value, that x part of my vertex, is the horizontal shift or translation. So if I have a positive in here, right, it shifts it left, and a negative shifts it right. So if in my equation, that's what this piece is telling me, in my equation, if I have a plus, I go to the left, and if I have a Negative, it goes to the right. So it's a little bit backwards, and that's how it's meant to be. So k, this value. You should have seen that this k value moves things up and down. So that is vertical. That's our vertical shift. So a plus will shift it up, and a negative will shift it down. So one thing I want you to get in the habit of noticing is if something is inside my parentheses, it's going to be backwards to what I think. But if it's outside my parentheses, it's going to do what I think it's supposed to do. So if a is negative, so if I have a negative out front, the function is flipped or reflected across the x-axis. 
right? And we looked at that in that first section where if A is, neg is positive, it opens up, and if A is negative, it opens down. That's that reflection or that flip, okay? So if A, the absolute value of A is greater than 1, that's what we call, right? And since it's outside my parentheses, I also want you to think this, outside my parentheses means vertical, so up and down. Inside the parentheses is left and right. So since that A is outside and it's bigger than 1, it's going to be a, a vertical stretch. And if it's between 0 and 1, so if it's a fraction or if it's a decimal, it's going to be a vertical shrink or compression. That's another word you'll see there. Okay. So now we're going to take that information and we're going to write the equations from that, knowing what we know now. Let me actually leave that there so you can see what I'm talking about. So on number 13, I'm going to just start with my general function, missing some stuff. Okay, That's kind of where I like to start. So I see that I'm translating this two units to the right. Oh, so here's where I'm shifting it to the right. It goes as my h value to the right. I don't see anything else there. I'm not doing anything else, so I know that that would be my final product. Okay, let's look at number 16 together. So I start with my general. So I know I'm moving 7 units to the right, and I see that right up here. So it's, again, going to be a minus 7 units and 4 units up. Oh, up is right here, so it's going to be that k value. So I'm going to be adding 4 to the end. Okay. So now I want you to take this information, this little chart that we've made, and try it on these next several um, examples and see what you can do. So I'm also posting the answers for this because I want you to get really comfortable about going back and forth between equations and graphs and words. That's the important piece. So once you're done with this, you're going to jump right into the homework for this section and let me know whenever you get stuck.